Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time and have a collection of hundreds of monster ecology and fantasy world history videos on my channel. If you like what I do, please consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button or backing me on Patreon where you can get access to all of the scripts I write for these videos and of course subscribing to me here as I upload at least twice a week. In this video, we are taking a look at two closely related artifacts that first appeared in Eldritch Wizardry, written by Gary Gygax and Brian Bloom for the original edition of Dungeons and Dragons, published in 1976. This makes it only the third supplement to the original D&D rules, along with gods, demigods and heroes, and swords and spells. The two artifacts later appeared in the Book of Artifacts, a source book for second edition D&D published in 1993 by TSR, written by David Z. Cook, with a lot of excellent contributing writers. Not only contains 50 artifacts, many of which are iconic to the game's history, but also contains sections detailing the mechanics of artifacts and how they operate in the game world. If you are interested in a video or two talking about that and how artifacts have evolved over the game's history, please let me know in the comments below and I will make sure I get those videos made for you. Today, we're looking at two mysterious devices of magic and technology that, and sorry to bring this up again, but it really proves the point considering these were created in 1976 and constitute very firm proof that Dungeons and Dragons has always been a science fantasy role-playing game, just as much as it has been about swords and chainmail loincloths. There has always been an element of high technology as magic and vice versa. So let us delve into the pages and I will be quoting the text directly in some parts with some paraphrasing and additional notes as is my way. On the machine of Lum the Mad and the mighty servant of Luko. Thanks to those who requested these artifacts in the comments on previous videos in the magic series. I do pay, pay attention. First, a bit of history on Lum the Mad, quoting from the Wikipedia article page uh, on a list of famous characters from the Greyhawk setting, the world of Earth. On the world of Earth, or Earth, or Earth, <laughs> on the world of Earth, home planet of the Greyhawk setting, Baron Lum the Mad was a mighty warlord whose power was at least partially due to his possession of the artifact known as the Infernal Machine. Lum was betrayed by his former general Luko when the latter came to possess the artifact later known as the Mighty Servant of Luko. This final conflict involving two whole armies and left a large area of land quite devastated. Seeing that things were not going to result in his triumph, Lum summoned a mysterious mist and plunged through a dimensional portal a rift to the plane of limbo. Within the plane of chaos, Lum waited for centuries, his connection to the machine leaving him unable to die. The machine was housed in the fortress Rifter near the ill-fated capital city of Rorxes within the Great Kingdom, until the fortress was later destroyed, quite likely due to the machine's wild influence. Baron Lum lived a life obsessed with war and conquest, trained for it from boyhood when he was rewarded for thinking and planning, but punished for frivolous behavior. His first experience with love of the opposite sex was twisted, painful, and empty. He grew to be a handsome man with rugged features marred by only a few scars from battles and duels. More than eight centuries ago, he discovered the sword Drunizeth, an artifact sacred to Tharazdun. He wielded it against Ur Flane sorcerers of the Thalwood, but lost it during the fray. He spent the rest of his time on Earth searching for it, the effort slowly driving him insane. I would argue he was a few arrows short of a full quiver well before that. But anyway, years later, while exploring a castle his armies had conquered, he came across the machine that would bear his name, a horseshoe-shaped nightmare of black metal festooned with levers, dials, sockets, wires, and plugs. Through trial and error, he learned to manipulate it, learning more about its functions than even the wisest sages have since then. If he was mad before, the blasphemous technology of the device drove him over the edge, but it also brought him great power. With his disciplined troops and his new powers, he carved out a mighty fiefdom. It is said that, with the machine, he brought no fewer than 50 new species of monsters into the world. He thought nothing of unleashing huge barrages of fire during his conquests that annihilated large numbers of his own troops, as well as the enemy, so long as he carried the day. His reign was one of cruelty and horror, but it was credited in part for the impressive Eridian successes in the days before the victories over the rival nations of Sewell and Flan were assured. 
Lum's reign approached its twilight when his formerly loyal subordinate, General Lu Ko, discovered the mighty servant artifact in the Belching Vortex that would become known by the name, uh, his name, the Belching Vortex, is located on a mountain cliff face known as Vashal Tool in Hestmark in Eastern Sunday. These days, nothing but a wasteland with no animal or plant life for miles. Some believe the mighty servant and the infernal machine were created by the same otherworldly artificer and the art appearance of them so closely together was no coincidence. It's said that the quasi-deity Crovis awoke from his sleep during this period to help bring Lum's tyranny to an end. With the might power of the mighty servant, Luko gathered a host that matched Lum's own. The two armies clashed many times before the final battle when Lum disappeared. Lum and his infernal machine have been featured in the computer games Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Baal, as being imprisoned in Watcher's Keep and briefly in the end of Planescape Torment when the final boss refers to the time when the Nameless One danced sorceries with Lum the Mad. The machine itself is described thus. This gigantic piece of intricate machinery is far too heavy and bulky to move by hand. It may be teleported or dimensionally doored, but other means of transport will probably result in the destruction of the machine's delicate workings. If the machine is dropped after a teleport or something like that, it will lose at least much fun function, and if it falls far enough, it will be destroyed. It is far too complex to be repaired. The machine has 70 dials and 30, uh, the 70 levers and 30 dials. It also has a type of large booth enough for four people to stand inside. Basically, it's a crystal-sided uh, sort of glass booth, like a uh, telephone box in the machine uh, it's middle. If a person or item is inside the booth, a lever is pulled or a dial turned, there may be an effect on the person or object inside. But generally, they'll be screened while they stand in the booth from any effect that happens outside, So, or vice versa. Of the 70 levers and 30 dials, 20 are no longer functioning due to the extreme age of the machine. This is identical to the description found in the Book of Artifacts, which sheds no additional light on who or what created the machine in the first place. However, the description of the Mighty Servant of Luko does provide a very, very important line in the Eldritch Wizardry listing, and that is, this relic of a visiting race of space travellers. So, the machine are of origin, of an alien origin, that makes me wonder just where the Belching Vortex is connected to. Eldritch Wizardry, or like for instance, maybe it's some sort of a malfunctioning space warp drive. Eldritch Wizardry states that given the proper commands, the Mighty Servant can perform as a fighting machine, a mode of transport, or a method of magical attack. There is some variation in the exact physical durability and resilience of the artifact between the Eldritch Wizardry and the Book of Artifacts, but I've come up with a fairly faithful 5th edition version for you, which I'll be talking about at the end of this video. The Mighty Servant of Luko is a towering automaton of jet black metal and shadowy crystal that is believed to be a construct of the same ancient and mysterious race that built the dreaded machine of Lum the Mad. Looking at them side by side, it's obvious that from the black metal and the seamless construction that they are in fact from the same workmanship. Workmanship and materials evidenced by the Mighty Luko are unlike any found in the recorded histories of the civilized races. All accounts of the Mighty Servant began with its discovery by the infamous General Luko. Luko was a follower of the Warlord Lum, obviously, but turned against him when he came into possession of the Instrument of Destruction, thinking, hmm, I can use this. With the power of the Mighty Servant to back him, Luko forged an army that rivaled even Lum's. Lum had no shortage of enemies. The two forces clashed many times, always ending in a stalemate. At last, the two forces met in a final battle. Lum and Luko faced each other, their mighty artifacts unleashing powers greater than any since harnessed. It is said that the power that uh, the battle laid waste to a great kingdom and left a scorched desert in its wake. The mighty servant is believed by many to have been destroyed in the final battle, though others believe it plunged through a dimensional rift opened in that great conflict, similar to the one Lum created and vanished through, so there's no telling where the machines are uh, located in time or space. Same sort of thing for the machine of Lum the Mad, it could up, turn up anywhere in the multiverse. And who is to say that either of these artifacts are one of a kind? I'd argue that they are merely advanced technology of some alien race that could show up in your Forgotten Realms campaign whenever and wherever you want, such as an artifact of the Spellweavers or 
some such some so what sort of powers do the machine of lum the mad have again you get to fill in the blanks on what all the dials and levers do and what positions they have to be in to activate specific spell like effects or extraordinary powers of the machine this is common to artifacts i heartily recommend making some sort of a replica control interface using cardboard buttons and matchsticks and make some notes on the preset effects you have worked out and when the players are messing around with it at the gaming table, make some quiet rolls when they create new patterns and see if it triggers something random. I use the Net Librem of Random Magical Effects version 2.0 by Oryx for just such occasions, rolling first to see if the machine is activated at all, or if that pattern is broken, and if it does activate, I roll 4d10 to generate a number between 001, uh, 0001 and 0000 for a possible 10,000 different results. If you don't have this document printed out and bound next to you, do yourself a favor and do so at your next opportunity. It's 100% awesome. Okay, here are my stats for the Mighty Servant of Luco. The Mighty Servant of Luco is a huge artifact construct, size 9 feet tall, 5 feet wide, 6 feet deep, weighs 2 tons. The appearance is jet black metal, shadowy crystal, and several mysterious fibrous materials. As broad as a dwarf and as lumbering as a beetle, it walks by swaying along on two stocky legs and has two dangling arms which end in sturdy pincer grippers. It's kind of like a uh, robot pirate. An internal compartment is configured to seat two man-sized creatures comfortably. Medium-sized, we call them these days. There is a single hatch on the back which provides entry and exit from the internal compartment. Once inside, the characters are faced with a daunting array of pedals, switches, levers and wheels that all control the thing's operation. Controlling the Mighty Servant can be learned by trial or error, or through information gleaned from libraries and sages who have previously studied it. It has an armor class of 14. It has only 60 hit points, but it's got regeneration that heals two hit points per round and basically this thing can reassemble itself from almost all sorts of damage that doesn't completely destroy it. It's nigh invulnerable so it can only be damaged by magical weapons of plus two or greater. Even then it takes only one point of damage from any bludgeoning weapon hit and half damage from any edged weapon. If struck by any kind of damaging magical effect roll 1d10 and it will only take damage on a result of a 10. The Mighty Servant of Luko is immune to acid, normal cold, normal heat and fire, vacuum or water, while lightning and magical fire inflict half damage. It has a speed of only 15 feet per round and it's very noisy, but the thing will just go and go and go. It can operate for 12 hours if the correct method of automation uh, is used. After those 12 hours, it will need to shut down and recharge for two hours. One slam attack each round, plus five to hit, inflicting 1d6 times 10 bludgeoning damage and double damage to non-living objects and structures because the thing is essentially adamantine. Other abilities? Like all major artifacts, the Mighty Servant has a random selection of other extraordinary powers that are worked out for each new campaign it appears in. To keep it interesting and provide the mixture of excitement and terror the discovery of these powers brings to the gaming table. So even if you've encountered the machine of uh, the Mighty Servant of Luko before with another previous character in a previous campaign, when you discover it with a new character in a new campaign, it's similar but different in an exciting way. Example powers would be activating spell-like effects such as levitation, create light and sleep, while also forcing the user to go on one holy quest after another and transforming the user to a chaotic alignment permanently. The Mighty Servant is very intimidating to small humanoids, requiring them to make a uh, saving throw a moderate check against their wisdom or be frightened of it, mainly because it looks quite capable of stomping on them. Your choice if it can, uh, you just use the same attack stats as its slam attack. There is space inside for two medium-sized creatures and up to five more can ride on the outside of the Mighty Servant. It's swaying, plodding pace, able to uh, slowly cover great distances without the expense and inconvenience of pack animals and horses. And of course, it's self-powered. However, because the operation of the Mighty Servant requires knowledge of numerous magical command phrases, adventurers might find themselves exploring the most ancient and deadly of ruins in search of lore that might reveal one or more of the machine's secrets. So, for instance, if one of these things was transported by the ancient empire of Netheril, the secrets to using its special functions may lead you on a quest to the uh, desert tombs of Anarok and facing down eldritch giants and other horrors. 
Plus, keep in mind the Mighty Servant will cause the alignment shift in those who use it, so it's wise to use it sparingly unless such an effect has minimum, minimal impact on the viability of a player character. Uh, I'd be wary of forcing effects that uh, change a character's alignment, really. You might want to give them some sort of a sliding scale of uh, alignment change over time, so they'll be well prepared for any sort of effect that happens. The Mighty Servant hungers endlessly for combat and bloodshed. It does have some sort of a self-direction, which with each use of the servant's power, the operate must, operator must roll a successful moderate wisdom saving throw or become filled with battle fury for 24 hours. During that time, the artifact is used in a rampage of destruction to any and all within reach, essentially like a crazy person in charge of a tank. Some suggested means of destruction, otherwise it will always regenerate back to fully functional condition, are the possibility of inflicting so much physical damage that it can no longer regenerate at all, such as its parts being scattered wide enough that they can't reassemble. Or there might be a command phrase, which even Luke Ode never knew, that causes the Mighty Servant to explode. The radius of this fireball and the damage that might inflict is unknown, but most certainly be terrible since it involves the release of all the magical energies of the Servant in one single surge. It's also highly likely that there is some means to destroy the Mighty Servant by using the right settings on the machine of Lum the Mad, but of course they never discovered those ones either. And that's about it for those uh, two artifacts. Please hit the like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you'd like what I do. Check out my Patreon for some exclusive content and all the full scripts for these videos. Buy some merchandise. Wear your geek with pride. And as always, thanks for listening. And I'll be back with more for you very soon.